Okay. This evening I'm going to talk about pragmatic presentation skills. And why pragmatic and not theoretical? Well, we spend a lot of time covering a lot of the theorists and the theories, so Gagne, uh, Maslow, and so on. And ideally, we'd like to turn that into something we can use pragmatically. So, what are the outcomes of this presentation? Well, ideally, I'd like to take this knowledge, these concepts, and turn it into something you can use to create your own powerful presentations. The other thing is this, also use your knowledge to simplify it so that you can explain it in a manner that people can understand. Because you are the expert, you have skills and experiences that your audience may not have, and you need to be able to share that with them. And then obviously, I'd like to be able to make killer presentations. So why am I doing this presentation? Well, I have 30 years as a facilitator, instructor, and presenter. And hopefully, somewhere along the line, I've picked up a thing or two worth mentioning. So imagine a three-legged stool. A three-legged stool is unstable with only two uh, or one leg. And the same thing with the, with the presentation. It needs three components for it to be successful. Content. Now, we're all social matter experts. We all know our, our, we all have a certain skills and experience in the topics that we're talking about. We also know that content alone, if we stood up here and just did a lecture, the chances of people retaining that information would only be around 5%, so we need something more. We need visuals. By visuals, I mean images, icons, diagrams, text, color, anything to stimulate our minds. And delivery methodology. In other words, are we doing this as a whiteboard session, PowerPoint presentation? group discussion or something else. So these three components make up a successful presentation. Now, we've covered that. So what's next? Well, we need to understand our audience. We need to understand their background, their fears, their interests, their motivations, uh, their skills and experience level, so that we can tailor our message to suit them. And they also have outcomes that they're interested in, that they want as a part of this session or presentation or class. Insights, value, and I don't mean financial value, I mean something that uh, skills and knowledge are applicable in the real world. But then also as a presenter or instructor, I want the class or the audience feel, think, and do something. So I want them to feel good about the environment, about the presentation, or the session, or the class, about me as a presenter. I want them to think about the concepts that we're covering as a part of this session. And ideally, I wanted to do something as a result of this session or presentation or instruction. So how do we make sure this is successful? Well, Four rules of presentation. So the first one is don't use PowerPoint. Now, I know this may seem a bit strange uh, in a session or, or a course where we're talking about using PowerPoint features and functions. However, what I mean is we need to be aware of the constraints of PowerPoint. In other words, uh, when we're creating a PowerPoint presentation, we're creating something that includes a message aimed at a specific audience 
in a given time frame. Now that may be okay in a classroom setting where we generally know or understand the background of the audience, the people attending the course, but in a business sense, that may not be the case. So we may spend days or weeks creating good PowerPoint presentation. We arrive, we, the room we're gonna use is delayed or is used so we can't uh, start a presentation. We create an hour long presentation but we only have 45 minutes to do it. So what do I do? Do I start removing slides? Do I speak faster? Uh, the other thing as well is I may uh, have aimed my message at end users, but the people in the audience are end users, managers, and IT. So the message I've created won't suit them all. And I like to use an analogy here. So PowerPoint is like going to the store, the frozen section, and buying frozen lasagna. We go home, stick it in the microwave, bing, four minutes later, it's done. Now, it's ready-made, doesn't require much skill, I can't do much with it, maybe season it a bit. And that's what a PowerPoint presentation is. On the other hand, whiteboarding is more like being a chef. I have the tools, techniques, knowledge, and skills to use the same ingredients uh, to create a lasagna. So let's say I arrive and you all turn out to be vegans. Well, I can remove the meat and add vegetables instead. So whiteboarding allows a greater freedom in driving conversation. So just being aware of the constraints of PowerPoint. it short and simple. As adults, we learn best in bite-sized chunks. We need to break things down. And it's also very important that when we use PowerPoint or when we're doing whiteboarding, that we build things up a, sec a piece at a time. So no more than one concept or idea per slide or per section, so that we don't confuse the message and uh, we make sure that we're very clear in what we're, what we're providing. And short as well, uh, it's important to keep it at a length that is comfortable, so the people aren't spending hours listening to a presentation or a session. Rule number three. Adult learning principles. So we all look for ways in which we retain information. Number one, learning styles. So we know we've heard of things like nine types of intelligence and so on, and people present or learn things a certain way. Some people are more musical, other people prefer different ways of learning. But we can distill this into four key styles. Number one, visual. So most people are visual thinkers. They like images or diagrams or drawings or icons to understand a concept. Some people prefer text, reading, for example. And some for listen to people talk. And then we have other people that are more hands-on, like that, learning by doing, they do things hands-on. It's important when we are doing any kind of presentation or session that we include a combination of these so that we get, uh, so we help people retain as much information as possible, but also find these teachable moments. And then expectations. We've covered that to a certain extent in terms of the audience's uh, expectations, their outcomes. What do they want out of their session? What are they looking for? But also my expectations as a presenter or instructor or facilitator. What is it I want people to feel, think, and do? And then application. All the knowledge that we're providing them in terms of the outcomes and what people are looking for, they need to be able to apply in their day-to-day -day job role or, or whatever it is they're going to do. So in this case, train the trainer 
we want to have applicable skills that we can apply when we work as trainers or instructors or facilitators. Repetition. Repetition is important. As adults, we need to have things repeated to us a number of times for things to stick. But equally, repetition with a difference. In other words, if somebody doesn't understand something that I've said the first time, they're not likely to understand it the second or third time. Even if I speak louder or slower, it's important to find these teachable moments. Stories, analogies, something that will trigger people's um, um, imagination is really, really important to get to that teachable moment. Nurture. So we've covered Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it's important that we create a good learning environment, but also that we provide the means for people to be successful when they are using these skills on the job after having attended the class. And then the fourth rule. Now, I already covered this, but using whiteboarding means that we really have to know our subject matter. We need to really be sure that we, we know well to be able to talk about it and explain it to people and drive conversations. We can actually use a PowerPoint as a crutch. In other words, it, it drags us along. We don't necessarily need to be experts in the topic that we're talking about because the information is, is presented in the slides. But in whiteboard, you can't hide. We need to have that knowledge of the skill to be able to drive the conversation. So to summarize, start off with pragmatic presentation skills. And that's a bit of an attention grabber, just to get people's attention, rather than just saying presentation skills. Uh, we've covered the, the, uh, the outcomes, the three outcomes introduce myself as an instructor and the idea being to aid credibility to get you to feel that you trust me more as an instructor or a presenter. We cover the three components of successful presentation, content, which we all have and know, visuals, leveraging images, colors, icons and text, and the delivery methodology. In other words, what we're doing is a lecture, a power presentation, a whiteboard session or a group discussion or a combination of all of the above. But we need these three components to have a successful presentation. We covered the audience. In other words, we need to understand their background, their skill levels, their, their interests, their motivation, and so on, so that we can tailor our presentation and instruction to suit them. They, the audience, have outcomes they're looking for, and they should match the outcomes uh, or the, the outcomes that we've highlighted as a part of the course or session. And then, as instructors, we want people to feel, think, do. In other words, feel good about the presentation, think about the concepts, and do something with those concepts, ideally. The four rules of presentation, don't use PowerPoint, is another attention grabber. The reason being that any presentation, people remember the beginning and the end, but tend to forget uh, the, the stuff in the middle, it becomes a muddle. So by using these attention grabbers, we can uh, maintain an interest in our presentation. Even though here, I'm not saying don't use PowerPoint, what I'm saying is, be aware of the limitations of PowerPoint and the strengths of using whiteboarding and group discussions and other forms of delivery methodologies. Keep it short and simple. Again, we retain information best in bite-sized chunks. The adult learning principles, we have the acronym LEARN, learning styles. Make sure we use a combination. Expectations, the audience, ours. Application of what we teach them is applicable in real life. Repetition and repetition with a difference which is about finding that teachable moment that people go, ah, I get it. And nurture, create a good learning environment, but also ideally aid them in getting a good work environment uh, after the class. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you.